The quarterbacks continue to battle it out as the Raiders return to practice on Monday. Did either one of the guys step up and state the reason why they should be the starting quarterback of the Silver and Black? That plus a whole lot more comes up on Tuesday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for August 6th, 2024. You are Locked On Raiders, your daily Las Vegas Raiders podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome here, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. To get the latest edition of the show, as soon as it becomes available, as always, you're checking us out on YouTube. You know we appreciate that. The show continues to grow each and every day. And matter of fact, we're up to 15,000 subscriptions. My man Ari let me know that we're officially up to 15K as far as subscriptions on our YouTube page goes. So we definitely appreciate that. Raider Nation, the support has been phenomenal. We appreciate you in a major way and of course as i mentioned my man ari we appreciate him he makes sure we're on youtube we're looking good and we sound good so again thanks so much raider nation for the support of the show and we're going to continue to do our best to deliver each and every day on the show you can hit up ari on twitter at ari produces you can hit me up as well at your boy q254 and if you want to be a part of the show we got the lockdown raider podcast voicemail line 707-654-4693 we had no calls or texts in segment number three on monday's show we will get back to your calls and texts coming up today in segment number three got a lot of conversations and most of it is around the quarterback competition as well it's getting closer to the end of training camp as they get ready to prepare for the minnesota vikings coming up at the end of the week on saturday in minnesota for preseason game number one you would like to see these quarterbacks start to really state the case on why they should be the starting QB. Who's going to step up? And as AP said it, who's going to take the bull by the horns? Of course, we'll get into a lot of that conversation. You'll hear those calls and texts in segment number three. Segment number two, I want to talk about, well, not only what we saw on Monday from Raiders training camp, but really the quarterbacks, Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell, and honestly, my disappointment in where Aiden O'Connell is in this competition as of right now. That'll come up in segment number two in today's Locked On Raiders podcast here in segment number one, just news and notes of the day. We'll jump right into it after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is FanDuel. Make every moment more. The summer has rolled down, right? It's winding down. Sports ain't sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. Something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started today. So as we start off with news and notes of the day, on Monday, the Raiders released their first unofficial depth chart of the 2024 season, which is pretty incredible. But as you think about it, it's a game week, right? And we talked to Antonio Pierce uh, on Monday before practice and realized that, hey, we're talking about an actual game coming up at the end of the week as they take on the Minnesota Vikings for preseason game number one. And he let it be known that he's not in game mode just yet. It's still all about the Raiders. But once Wednesday comes and they break camp and they uh, leave Costa Mesa, California, then it'll be on to the Vikings. And then they'll start worrying about who's playing, how much they're going to be playing, this and that as far as the game goes. But not quite there yet, but we're really close. We're knocking on the door of Antonio Pearson and, and the rest of the staff turning their attention to the Minnesota Vikings. But they did release their depth chart. Again, it's unofficial, right? I mean, it's just they got to put one out each and every game week. And they put it out. But this is the first one of the year. And so it's pretty cool to realize that this is how close we are, that we're starting to see depth charts. And the Raiders did their depth chart a little bit differently than most teams do around the league. And that's okay. But they got the 12 personnel. We talked a lot about that ever since Brock Bowers was drafted. They put their depth chart out as it, and, it, and it reflects 12 personnel. So we'll go over it. Pretty quickly, starting wide receivers, Devontae Adams on one side, Jacoby Myers on the other. The two deep at the wide receiver position behind Devontae, you've got Christian Wilkerson. Behind Jacoby Myers, you got Trey Tucker. So that's the two deep. That's all I'm going to go on this unless there's a reason to go three deep. As far as the, the starting offensive line, left tackle, Colton Miller. Left guard, Cody Whitehair. Center, Andre James. And right guard, Dylan Parham with right tackle being they are Munford. Now, the thing that's noticeable about this is Colton Miller is listed as the left tackle, even though he's on the pup list right now. So, uh, again, he's not going to be a guy that you're going to see in action unless all of a sudden he returns from the pup list like today or sometime this week, and then they feel like he's good to go for the game. I'd be shocked at that, but they still haven't started or listed as a starting left tackle. So that's kind of interesting. Behind Colton Miller, you've got Andres Pete. Left guard, again, I mentioned Cody Whitehair. They have him as a starter behind him, JPJ. 
Jackson Powers Johnson, he's the guy I expected to be the starter, but he's been on the pup list, has not had one day of training camp so far, so you can understand why uh, he's, uh, you know, he's the second the second layer, second line at the left guard position. Really, it's funny, the only thing I've seen from Colton Miller and JPJ all training camp long is every day towards the end of, of, uh, of the practice, you'll see them go out to where the coal tanks are listed or are sitting at the, uh, at the Costa Mesa, at the, at the Jack Hammond Sports Complex, and you'll see them get into the coal tank. That's it. That's all we've seen so far. Uh, JPJ, I'm, I'm kind of concerned that he hasn't been out there just yet. Again, Tom Telesco told us last week that it wasn't going to be long, or maybe that was even the first week that it wasn't going to be long. And, well, he hasn't been out there yet, so he's missing very valuable time. Camp's getting ready to break. But he's listed right now too, uh, too, too deep on the depth chart. Starting center, as I mentioned, Andre James got Ben Brown behind him. Dylan Parham at right guard. Jordan Meredith behind him. Thayer Mumford has rookie DJ Glaze behind him. And I'll say this, at practice, you see a lot of DJ Glaze sign up at the right tackle position. You see Thayer Mumford kicking over to the left tackle position. Or you see DJ Glaze and Thayer Mumford kind of splitting the reps at the right tackle spot. So we talked about the competition in training camp. We obviously talked about the quarterback competition. We talked about the starting cornerback competition across from Jack Jones. But there may be a little bit of uh, competition brewing at that right tackle position. DJ Glaze may have turned enough heads to really – uh, you know, garner the competition. And, and I don't, I'm not saying he's going to uh, take the job from Thayer Mumford, but he's at least in consideration. And he did enough against Max Crosby, against uh, Tyree Wilson, against uh, Malcolm Koontz, right? Against anyone who lined up across from him. He did enough to at least be noticed. Has he won every rep? Of course not. But at least he's being noticed. So uh, continuing on with the depth chart, when you get to the tight ends, of course, both tight ends, Michael Mayer and Brock Bowers, are listed. I mentioned that the Raiders are, uh, they have released their depth chart in 12, representing 12 personnel. So Michael Mayer, Brock Bowers, both listed as starters. Uh, behind Mayer, you got Harrison Bryant. Behind Bowers, you've got Jack Gen- or Zach Gentry, I should say. Uh, the quarterback position, this one's interesting. Aiden O'Connell or Gardner Minshew, which is very college football-like, right? How many times do you see a depth chart in college football and you see uh, name or other name, right? Well, that's how it's listed because, again, there's no starting quarterback as of right now. Aiden O'Connell or Gardner Minshew is how it's listed right now on the unofficial depth chart. And, you know, what's going to be interesting, I know AP tried to downplay it on Monday. It's going to be interesting to see exactly who gets to start on Saturday against the Minnesota Vikings. Is is it going to tell the whole story? No, but we'll see who has earned the very first rep, right? Vinny Bonsignor asked AP on Monday, you know, about Aiden O'Connell earning the the first team reps, uh, you know, first opportunity uh, at training camp. And he said, hey, I said he was going to get the first snaps in the offseason, just as clarification. So no guaranteeing that Aiden O'Connell is going to get the first team reps and first snaps uh, on Saturday against Minnesota. And there's also no guarantee that he won't. Right, so it's going to be one of those. Unless they announce it ahead of time, I, I'd be pretty surprised. It might be something we find out the day of the game. Running back position: Zamir White, lead dog, Alexander Madison behind him on the two deep. So that's the offense. So here we go: Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers, two starting wide receivers. Offensive line: Colton Miller, Cody White here, Andre James, Dylan Parham, Thayer Munford. Tight ends: Michael Mayer, Brock Bowers, and then quarterback is Aiden O'Connell or Gardner Minshew with Zamir White as the running back. On the defensive side of things, the defensive ends, starting defensive ends, Max Crosby and Malcolm Kuntz. On the, on the two deep, Tyree Wilson is listed behind Max Crosby and behind Malcolm Kuntz, you have Janarius Robertson. Uh, defensive tackles, John Jenkins, then Byron Young listed behind him. That's the third-round pick out of Alabama who's starting to make some noise in training camp. Other defensive tackle position starter, Christian Wilkins with Adam Butler behind him. I mentioned Malcolm Coons and Janarius Robinson behind them. So the starting defensive line, Crosby, Jenkins, Wilkins, Coons. The linebackers, Divine Diablo, Robert Spillane. Behind Diablo, you got Luke Masterson. Behind Robert Spillane, you've got rookie Tommy Eichenberg. Starting corners, Nate Hobbs, Jacorian Bennett. Jack Jones, that's how it's listed. Of course, Nate Hobbs is the guy that's going to play in the slot. Behind Hobbs, you have MJ Devonshire, the seventh-round pick. Behind Bennett, you got D.K.M. Richardson, fourth-round pick that's getting some some love. And Jack Jones has Brandon Face on behind him. So there you go. That kind of gives you an idea of what we've been talking about the secondary and that J.B., Ja'Cory and Bennett's been having a really good practice and practice days and stacking those days, not to mention Face on is injured again. Seems like he's one of those guys that can never really stay healthy, but Hobbs, Bennett, Jack Jones starting corners for the silver and black. And then the safeties, Trayvon Merrick and Marcus Epps with Isaiah Palomao behind Trayvon Merrick and Chris Smith behind Marcus Epps. And I'll tell you this, 
have not heard hardly anything from Chris Smith all training camp, right? We talk about guys that really haven't stepped up and said any, and made any noise. Chris Smith is one of those guys that has not stepped up and made any noise. Six round pick out of Georgia a year ago. I thought he was going to take a step in the right direction this year. I uh, haven't heard anything from him yet. Trey Taylor's behind him on the three deep. If anything, you know, there's probably been more conversation about Trey Taylor than there has been about Chris Smith. But that's the, the, the first official or unofficial, I should say, excuse me, unofficial depth chart for the silver and black as they prepare for their first preseason game coming up Saturday versus Minnesota. So what about the quarterbacks? Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell. Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew. Going into Monday's practice, Gardner Minshew had a lead in the quarterback competition. But what's going on with Aiden O'Connell, and why am I slightly disappointed in what I've seen so far from him? I'll tell you about that coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is FanDuel. And anyone who's listened to this show, listened to me, and in any platform that I'm on knows that I love sports. I watch them all the time. Really don't watch any movies. Don't watch too many TV shows. I just love sports, sports, and more sports to the point where I never want them to stop. And, you know, you know, obviously the NBA season wound down. Uh, we're getting lucky because football's on the way back, but uh, NHL is over. Uh, that's been long gone. So we got baseball. And, of course, we got the Olympics, so we're blessed there. But uh, for the most part, man, the sports just ain't sporting like they normally do, right? The summertime, you know, that's rough. Well, FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want and lets you do the same thing. All you got to do is open up the app and dream up bets anytime you're in the mood. So all summer long, FanDuel's hooking up customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. All you got to do is head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to get into the quarterback competition, and we knew it was going to be a quarterback competition. We talked about it all the way leading up to training camp, and, of course, we talked about it throughout the course of training camp because we have to. We know the quarterback position is the most important position on the field. you got to have a quarterback. You don't have to have an elite guy, but you have to have a good guy. I say it all the time. you got to have good, consistent quarterback play if you want to be able to you know, have an opportunity in the National Football League as success, right? If you want to be a team that has a chance at the postseason, you've got to get good, consistent quarterback play, and the rest of the team has to be on point. If you don't have an elite quarterback, you better have a really good team around whatever good, consistent quarterback you can get. So the Raiders have Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell. I went into training camp believing that that was Aiden O'Connell's job to lose. Right. I felt like he was the leader in the clubhouse. He had the relationship with AP and, you know, the AP is a very loyal guy. As you saw last season, when he took over on November 1st and gave Aiden O'Connell the job, uh, told him, go ahead, you, you lead us down the stretch. And he did. And even when there was times I even thought that, okay, Aiden O'Connell is going to get benched. They're going to bring Jimmy G back or they're going to put another quarterback in. Uh, AP stuck with them, said, that's my guy. How would I look uh, going away from him now? Right. And so uh, obviously it worked out just fine. AP ended up getting the, the head coaching job. And so here we go. Fast forward to where we're at right now in training camp, where there's a battle between Gardner Minshew, who they gave $15 million fully guaranteed for two years and uh, Aiden O'Connell, who's a second year pro. Now, you know, a lot of people look at the money and say, oh, yeah, Gardner Minshew is going to win because of the money. Again, I look at $15 million fully guaranteed and think that ain't nothing in the National Football League, right? Especially when you look at some of the salaries that these quarterbacks are making. Hell, look at the salaries that these wide receivers are making and then look at $15 million fully guaranteed for two years. Not a, you know, not a big deal. Again, it was a two-year, like $25 million deal for Gardner Minshew, but $15 million of it was guaranteed. So that's what you really look at is the guaranteed money. But... I expected Aiden O'Connell to come into this competition, show that now he's in the second year of, uh, you know, being a pro and the game is starting to slow down for him. Uh, they spent a lot of time or he spent a lot of time at the Raiders facility throughout the course of, of the offseason, just trying to get, you know, his body right. He's got into really good shape. Uh, he was deep diving into Luke Getz's playbook. He was working out with Trey Tucker. So he was doing everything that was right. And I just kind of thought it was going to be uh, a formality. Like he was going to go into camp and he was going to show why he needed to be the starting quarterback. Like, I didn't think anything was going to be given to him because that's not who AP is. But I did think that Aiden O'Connell was going to go out there and earn the job. And look, I know it's only been nine practices officially in the books, but 
to say I'm disappointed in what I've seen so far from Aiden O'Connell, I think is a very accurate statement. Uh, I just have not seen the guy that I thought I was going to see, the more advanced guy, the guy that has calm around him right now, has leadership around him, has a winning culture around him, led by Antonio Pierce. Uh, you know, I just thought that, that we were going to see a lot more from him. And so far, we haven't. Now, that does not mean he's not going to be the guy. That doesn't mean that he can't be the guy. But it just means that right now, he hasn't gone into camp, and he has not taken the job and, and, and showed that he – is the job, right? I mean, I thought, again, ideally, Aiden O'Connell would win the job. Gardner Minshew would be, you know, high price insurance behind him. So just in case he didn't grasp things or just in case he, you know, hit a rough stretch and he needed some, you know, some some insurance and some relief, Gardner Minshew could come in there and help him out. But it looks like what what is happening is that there was a chance that Aiden O'Connell wasn't going to be able to pick up the offense as well as most of us believed he was, so they felt the need to make sure that they had their backs covered by at least going out and getting that insurance in Gardner Minshew, and and if Aiden O'Connell doesn't pick it up, then all of a sudden he could be the starting quarterback. Well, that's how it is right now, and I'll say this. Going into Monday, and I, and I talked about it a little bit on Monday's show, Aiden O'Connell definitely had a lead. He had a good Wednesday practice, had a good Friday's practice, and had a good Saturday scrimmage. So he went in to Monday with the lead. And I thought on Monday he was going to go in and play really well and extend that lead. Well, that didn't happen. Aiden O'Connell didn't play well. Gardner Minshew didn't play well. Honestly, the whole practice was really lethargic, not a lot of energy. There was multiple times when AP was getting on the team like, hey, wake up. Uh, you know, run with energy, you know, play with some passion. There was one point where he had a very spirited conversation with the defense, basically saying, if you don't run after the ball, you can run the hell out of here. If you're not if you're not trying to run, then get the hell on. Right. I mean, he was basically just saying, like, look, if you're not here to play and give it your all in the couple hours that we're here to practice, then then you probably don't need to be here. And, and that's how AP is. He's very, as a matter of fact, and very to the point. And when he sees something that he doesn't like, he's going to let it be known, and especially on the defensive side of things, there's so much responsibility that's going to go into what they're doing. They have so much, I don't want to say pressure, but they've got a lot riding on what they do this year. That defense, no doubt about it, is going to lead this team, right? They're going to, the, the, car, the team is going to go as far as the defense could take them. Yes, they need good, consistent quarterback play. Yes, they need the offense to contribute and, and complement them. But the defense is going to be the leader in the clubhouse. So when AP sees a practice where the defense is letting Zamir White run through him like a, a hot knife through butter, and they're just not you know running after the ball carrier very much, and just kind of looks like lack you know lackadaisical out there, he's going to let it be known. And that's happened a couple times, matter of fact, on Monday. But you know, getting back to Aiden O'Connell again, just uh, it, it thought it would be ideal to see the second year guy on a rookie deal. Right, be able to go in there and be that starting quarterback and really continue to bond and grow with the team like he did last year after he took over on November 1st. But uh, as of right now, it just has not been the situation. He's completed some some balls down the field. He stands in the pocket real tall, throws a nice, accurate pass. Right, He's got a strong arm. He just holds on to the ball too long. I don't know how many times I'm standing on the sideline on I mean, how many times Paul Gutierrez is standing on the sideline on how many times Vinny Bonsignor is standing on the sideline next to me. And when the ball is snapped, we're looking, we're looking, we're looking. After a couple looks, 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 we say dead. Dead. That means that he's just got sacked. And now, again, I've said this so many times that it's it's really it's almost hard to determine what you're looking at because you know that the defense is really good and the defensive line has lived in the backfield. So for Aiden O'Connell. He has been under duress all training camp long. He hasn't been very comfortable back there. And, you know, he, he, he's had to rush some throws. He's had to throw some, you know, clock him in the dirt. Uh, just did not look very good at times. And, you know, a lot of it, like I said, is from the defensive line pressure or even the secondary doing a really jo good job covering on the back end. Where Gardner Minshew, not saying that he's, you know, fantastic, you know, he's obviously doesn't have the size that Aiden O'Connell has, doesn't have the arm strength as Aiden O'Connell. And hell, he doesn't have the accuracy that Aiden O'Connell has. But what he does have is the ability to move the pocket. And I know that a lot of folks don't want to talk about mobility and don't think that it's a big deal. But I'm sorry, but in 2024, your quarterback has to be able to move a little bit. He's got to be able to. He can't have cement shoes, right? And right now, it looks like Aiden O'Connell has cement shoes. So more times than not, and even on Monday, there's a couple nice passes that were completed, but... They were, you know, they were they were ones that Max Crosby had already got to the quarterback, already hit him, 
And then, obviously, the play keeps going because, you know, he didn't tackle him. He just tagged him. Uh, and then he makes a nice completion. There were some really great passes from Aiden O'Connell in one-on-one drills. Problem with that is it's one-on-one drills and there's no pass rush. Right? I mean, so he he's shown where he really looks good at, which has been in drills, when there's no pass rush, uh, you know, when he's able to 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 stand in the pocket and, and not have too much pressure around him, which is great. But when he's under pressure, then he's he's in he's in trouble. Right? I mean, to the point where there's been beat writers and there's been folks, there's been conversation on the sideline about, man, Anthony Brown doesn't look too bad. Look, look, Anthony Brown is a third string quarterback at best. Right? He's not a starting quarterback. He's not competing for that. But what's going to happen, and mark my words, as it's uh, August 6th right now, mark my words, this is what's going to happen. Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell are going to play in the preseason. Anthony Brown's going to get plenty of burn in the preseason as well. Hell, he might play the whole third third game for all I know. Like, I don't know what the plan is. I don't know how AP and the rest of the staff plans on, uh, you know, splitting up the, 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 the not carries, but the uh, the workload for O'Connell and, and Minshew. But Anthony Brown's going to get plenty of burn. And and so will uh, so will Carter Bradley, Gus Bradley's son, who's the f- fourth string quarterback. Even on the unofficial depth chart, he's the fourth string quarterback. They'll get plenty of burn. But you'll see Anthony Brown be mobile, have some athleticism. He has a strong arm. He's probably going to play well in the preseason against you know third and fourth stringers, as he should. And somebody's going to call into this fine program that we call the Locked On Raiders podcast, or they're going to call into my radio show, Unnecessary Roughness on Raider Nation Radio 920, or hell, they might catch me on ESPN on game night and say, hey, Q, you know, I think Anthony Brown has an opportunity to be that guy. He might have a diamond in the rough. He's not a starting quarterback. He's not. There's, there's simple passes that he misses. Uh, there's simple plays that, you know, he just doesn't diagnose well. There's a reason why. He's a backup quarterback. Again, I think he has a role, especially with the new quarterback rule and and who you could dress and who you don't dress. I think that there's a role he could play, but starting quarterback is not it. Speaking of Anthony Brown, uh, I want to shout out to Jeff Foreman, uh, Raiders uh, undrafted free agent. Uh, He was the guy that he was rocking number 80. He was a guy that uh, actually was having a pretty good little training camp. Unfortunately, he left camp on Monday. Um, with a, a knee injury that the Raiders were saying he was being evaluated, but it was it was a really bad uh, knee injury. Matter of fact, it, and I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to ex- diagnose exactly what it is, but it, to me, was probably more even of a lower leg injury. Uh, he, he dove for a ball that Anthony Brown threw. It was not a very good pass, and because Jeff was given the extra effort out there, he came down wrong, and uh, all of a sudden, you heard, out a, you heard a, him yell out a scream. Uh, you, heard, you saw him start pounding the the ground, and it's happened right in front of me. It was me, Paul Gutierrez, Adam Hill, Vinny Monsignor, Myra Gomez. We were all kind of right there. We all kind of looked at each other and was like, ah. You know, like that's the unfortunate part of training camp and football. These guys are going to try to give the extra effort so the coaches notice them. And, you know, unfortunately for Jeff Foreman, uh, that situation happened. So uh, everyone knew immediately that he was really hurt. It was a bad injury. Uh, The cart came out immediately to get him. They put him in an air cast and, you know, an ambulance came to get him and, uh, you know, take him to the hospital for further evaluation. Uh, It looked like some kind of, it sounded like some kind of break. But again, I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to give you my uneducated evaluation. But just say, just let it be known it wasn't good. And it doesn't look like you'll be uh, hearing or seeing from Jeff Foreman anytime this season. So, you know, prayers out to him and his family. Obviously, uh, you never want to see anybody go down with an injury like that. And it's a harsh reality of what, you know, NFL action is all about. But I say that to say, you know, it was a pass from Anthony Brown that was an off pass that, you know, led to that injury. And Anthony was, you could see he was really hurt by it. Uh, I feel really bad because, you know, he's thinking, man, if I had made a good throw, then he wouldn't have laid out like that. And, you know, my brother would still be, you know, here fighting for for a roster spot. Instead, you know, he, he obviously got injured. So you could see Anthony walk over, check on him, you know, just give him a pat on, on the back, let him know that, hey, that you're my brother. And then he walked down to the other side of the field. He sat down. You could see that he was just... Not too happy, and I can only imagine how bad he feels. So I hate that for Anthony Brown as well because he's probably feeling like, hey, he cost a, a dude an opportunity at a roster spot. And it's not his fault. It's just it's just, it's just, how the game goes. It's, it's what the game of football is. And uh, that could have been anybody. And that could have been anyone throw the pass. That could have been anyone dive and lay out to try to receive the pass. And so I uh, hate that for Jeff and obviously hate that for Anthony Brown. But, you know, just like I say, just getting back to the quarterback competition, 
Uh, just disappointed that we haven't seen more from Aiden O'Connell. I, I swore going into the training camp that that was his job. He was going to get it. And right now, it looks like, at least right now, <laughs> you know, it hasn't even been a preseason game. And look, I think it's going to take a couple preseason games before they actually determine who their guy is going to be. They probably have a good idea right now who they think it's going to be, but they, I'm sure they're going to want to see at least two preseason games before they make the de determination. And that doesn't mean that they're going to tell us who the starting quarterback is after two preseason games, but I think the, in their heart of hearts, they'll have a good idea of who that is after a couple preseason games. And then you might start to see them trend towards, you know, more snaps and reps for that guy with the first team because they know, okay, hey, that's the guy that's going to have to be ready for the Chargers come uh, September 8th in SoFi Stadium for week one of the 2024 NFL season. So uh, it's still early. I, I say it's still early. I mean, they're going into practice number 10. They're supposed to have pads on today, and then they'll have shells on on Wednesday, and then they'll break camp, and boom, then it'll be time for preseason games, and the rest of their practices will be at the facility there in Henderson as they prepare for the upcoming season. So I say that there's still time. But time is starting to tick on Aiden O'Connell. And right now, it looks like Gardner Minshew is the leader in the clubhouse for that starting job. But that's what I got for you with that. What's on your mind? 707-654-4693. It's the Locked On Raider Podcast voicemail line. Your calls and texts are coming up next. Before we get to that, though, I do want to let you know about BetterHelp. And this show is being brought to you in part by BetterHelp. When your schedule is packed with kids, activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. So when you're talking about self-care, what are your non-negotiables? Like, never skip a leg day when you're going to the gym and when you're working out consistently. What is your leg day for your life? You know, even when we know what makes us happy, sometimes it's hard for us to make time for it. It just seems like it gets lost in the shuffle sometimes. And when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever before. If you ever thought about starting therapy, you should give BetterHelp a try. Why? Well, one, it's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, it's flexible, and it's suited to your schedule. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Sometimes just talking to someone that has no kind of agenda when it comes to your life is the easiest thing to do. So never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Again, Better H-E-L-P, BetterHelp dot com slash locked on. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts straight off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with a call from Darren from the 203. He's calling with a few observations about camp and a few thoughts on a few different cap situations and subjects. Here he is, Darren from the 203. Hey, Q. It's Darren calling from the 203. I've been able to listen to the show too much recently. So I got some catching up to do. So this isn't pertaining to anything in particular. Um... But what it is pertaining to, that's a complete lie, actually. It's pertaining to something from a show like a week ago. You brought up um, the Raiders not having a joint practice. Well, kind of glad. Um, and for the reasons that you said, you know, it's his first time running the show. Let him kind of maybe, – maybe he doesn't want to bring in some more variables that he has to control for. And the reason I called out that today is because the Giants and the Lions – uh, camp just had a fight break out not too long before I'm calling in this. Uh, Laporta, not Laporta, <clears throat> Amon Ra caught like a 10 or 15 yard something or another in route. And um, after the whistle's blown, the, the uh, Giants defender punched the ball out and then some hands were thrown between Amon Ra, number 24. And, you know, I, I could see why if he wouldn't want any even possibility of that happening. You know, let let the show stay calm and keep as much control as you can. Uh, so I think in hindsight, that makes sense, especially early on as a head coach, first-time head coach. Um, and then something else I wanted to call in, too, about was Trey Tucker, because, you know, you said he was putting some balls in the ground, which is frustrating. And then I don't know if it was the day I listened to that podcast or um, a couple of days after, but uh, I look at my phone. And I see the uh, in seven on seven, Trey Tucker caught a bomb from O'Connell, I think it was. Uh, so that was just a cool little way it timed up to hear about that. So I'm curious how he's looking actively in camp. That's my cat, Eden. Say hi, Eden. All right. Now please be quiet. I'm on the phone. Um, 
and yeah, keep us posted on DK Richardson because I'm excited. Maybe you know there's an opportunity there at corner two for someone to come in to take it. And a lot of the talk I'm hearing from Richardson it kind of sounds like the talk I heard from the ops. You know, you're you're getting these voices from the practices kind of lingering out these little snippets, just being like, hey, th- this kid kind of looks. Looks like he could start. Now Nate Hobbs is Nate Hobbs. I don't need to say anything else. Everyone understands that. So hopefully, you know, it's a high bar, but hopefully we have another situation like that. Keep us posted as you do. And, uh, yeah, that's it for me. Have a great rest of your day. Stay blessed. And I appreciate all that you do. Go Raiders. Darren, thanks so much for the call. Appreciate you. And as far as the joint practice thing goes, um, I think there's something to – uh, AP wanting to make sure that he can control what's going on, control the narrative, right? Not have to worry about another team, uh, you know, and, and as we saw, there was the, the Lions and Giants, multiple fights that they had on Monday at their joint practice, and I'm sure AP probably didn't want to do with that, deal with that. But he also had mentioned, he said it multiple times, there was no need for joint practice because his defense is so good. So the offense has to go up against those guys. They're so stinking good. That's just as good as as a, a joint practice. So uh, there's a couple parts to that. As far as Trey Tucker's goes, he is starting to bounce back. Uh, you know, it was a, it's a good sign. He struggled early on in camp. Uh, still has put the ball on the ground a couple times here and there. But I think that he's starting to come around just a little bit. But he does need to make sure he cleans it up and continues to work on uh, his hands because that's going to cost the Raiders late in games if he can't consistently be the guy that, that comes down with the ball. Uh, DK Richardson, the fourth-round pick out of Mississippi State, he's playing well. It's not perfect, but he's having a good camp. right? He's a guy who's, again, a fourth-round pick, not expected to be a starter, but he looks like a guy that when his number's called, he's going to be ready. We got to talk to him Monday after practice a little bit, and he just said he's you know, working on his craft. He, he makes goals and sets goals for himself every single day and tries to go out there and achieve those goals, whatever it is. If it's working on press man, man coverage, if it's you know working on zone, if it's working on turning around and locating the ball, there was a play uh, that he was in good position because he's got the speed. He's uh, in good position to make on Monday, and he just never turned around. So he ran into the wide receiver. The ball hit him in the back you know, of the jersey. And, of course, a flagstone. That's an automatic P.I. He's got to be able to turn and locate the ball. And he just didn't do it that time. I don't know if he just didn't trust himself. But he's got the speed to be able to run with anyone. He's got the size. He's long. He's lengthy. Uh, he, he's he's a guy that I think could be a player. But he's got to trust his instincts. We're going to get to talk to Ricky Manning Jr. today, uh, the secondary coach. So we're definitely going to have to ask him about DCAM and what he's seeing from him. But uh, I think when his number's called, I think he's going to be uh, ready to ready to roll. Just don't think his number's going to be called uh, immediately because, well, it doesn't have to be. And that's a good thing for the Raiders moving forward. But thanks for the call. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Josh in the 619. Q, Josh from the 619 texting in because I'm watching the NFL's Gardner Minshew highlights for the 2023 season, and I'm sold up to two minutes. I encourage everyone to go watch that because some of the plays I'm seeing him create just because he can roll out and move efficiently when the pocket breaks down is actually impressive. And even standing in the pocket, he's delivering dimes. I'm sold because that mobility factor is going to be a difference between a sack and a first down. And with our defense being as good as we all think it'll be, we just need someone that can create and manage the drives. Seems like Minshew could do that just fine. Some of these guys he's throwing to are nowhere near the talent level of the guys that we've got. That's Josh from the 619. And a couple things there. You're absolutely right when it comes to the mobility. You're absolutely right about the fact that that's going to be a factor and that can be the difference between a sack and a first down. There's no doubt. Be careful just watching highlights, though. Right, because highlights are highlights for a reason. They're not low lights, right? You're not watching the NFL's low lights. You're watching the highlights. So uh, you got to be able to, you know, go back and really look at full games and full bodies of work to see and learn exactly who Gardner Minshew is. I uh, I like his his competitive nature. I love the mobility that he has. It's just enough, right? It's not it's not too much, but it's enough to to get it done. He's obviously played in multiple different schemes, so he can pick it up pretty quickly. I mean, he was in Jacksonville, then he's in Philly, then he was in uh, Indianapolis, and now he's with the Raiders. He was been a backup, and he's been able to back up anybody who's been in front of him with some with some athleticism, right? So, I mean, that's again that's a positive as far as I'm concerned. But there's times where, you know, he gets on the run, throws the ball, and it's, it's, it's er- erratic, right? He, he'll throw it out of bounds, or he'll throw it into double coverage, and he'll get intercepted. I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's good and, and bad with both of these guys. Uh, Aiden's uh, bad is that he doesn't have the mobility. Minshew's uh, bad is he's got the mobility, but a lot of times he doesn't have the accuracy, and so sometimes he can get a little wound up tight and throw that ball, and it just kind of, uh, you know, takes off on him, and 
I might end up in the the arms of a defender, and that's definitely what you don't want. AP mentioned on Monday, Gardner's done some good things, but he's also turned the ball over a few times, and that's not good. They got to have a guy that protects the ball as well. But thanks so much for that text. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a call from Raider Edward calling out of L.A. He's calling to talk about the quarterback competition and who he thinks the Raiders should have as a starting QB to start the season off against the Chargers. Here he is, Raider Edward from L.A. Hey, what's up, Q? This is Raider Edward calling from L.A., Los Angeles. Um, Just wanted to give you a call and, you know, wanted to give you uh, my opinion. You know, I've been a Raider fan my whole life. I'm 27 years old. Um, uh, My opinion on the quarterback situation. So, I like... You know, Aiden O'Connell, he has a very good arm and, you know, very accurate for sure. You know, it has a lot of potential. We haven't seen his ceiling. But I also seen, you know, Gardner Minshew's mobility and able to not be, you know, more of a statue in the pocket, roll out, extend plays, which, you know, it's been a long time since we had a quarterback that could do those things. Um, but like you said, we've, uh, we've seen his, we've seen his tape and we kind of know his ceiling. And not that he's a bad quarterback. I think he's a he's a a, a really good middle of the pack quarterback. I would say, in my opinion. But as far as you know, who's in the, the starting goes, I think Minshew should start over Aiden O'Connell. Being that Aiden O'Connell, you know, started last year when you know Josh McDaniels got fired, AP put him in, and you know he's a good quarterback and everything, you know, but. You know, if we don't start off and aren't having the best season through the first few weeks, you know, of our schedule, I feel like it's really going to diminish, you know, AOC's confidence, being that, you know, he started and now he's sitting. Um, I'd rather kind of have that go on with Minshew to start off the year. You know, if he uh, if he starts off, if Minshew starts off the year, you know, at quarterback and we're not winning so many games, but you throw Aiden O'Connell in, you know, he, um, you know, doesn't lose his confidence because he is a second-year player. Minshew knows what it is to be a backup and to get bench, et cetera. Um, like I said, I think AOC should, I think AOC should not start. It should be Gardner Minshew, um, you know, and if, if things aren't going our way, then, hey, put the kid in. Appreciate you, too. Raider Edward, thanks so much for the call. Appreciate you. And, yeah, these two quarterbacks definitely have warts, right? I mentioned it before. Uh, they got – the things to like, accuracy and arm strength for O'Connell, mobility for Minshew. If you could only mesh those two together, you'd have the ultimate quarterback, right? You'd probably have Josh Allen, right? That'd be a fantastic player. Uh, I'm not sure who's going to start. Uh, if they had to start a game tomorrow, I would say it's, it's Gardner Minshew. But, again, uh, they don't have to start a game tomorrow. They don't have to start a game until September 8th. So, Aiden O'Connell still has an opportunity to earn his, his, his job or earn the job but he's got to go earn it, right? These preseason games, I think, are going to tell us a lot about these quarterbacks, and we'll see uh, who the Raiders end up going with. And, you know, maybe even whoever starts this game on Saturday against Minnesota, maybe that'll be, you know, somewhat of a hint of what they're feeling as far as these quarterbacks go, but only time will tell. But thanks so much for that call. I do appreciate you, and we'll close out with a text from Raider Yo. Hey, Q, Raider Yo here. Man, I wish I was able to be at training camp to see the offensive line because I got to be honest, I'm a little concerned about the Raiders' O-line, especially with Colton and JPJ injured. I'm worried we don't have enough depth. That's Raider Yo. Thanks so much for the text. I appreciate you. Well, Colton's not injured. He's coming back. You know, he's rehabbing still. So uh, he's not injured. JPJ, you know, he's dealing with the concussion. He hasn't come back yet. I'm concerned about him too because Tom Telesco said he was going to come back sooner rather than later, and he's not back yet. Right. And so we're still waiting. We're still waiting. We're still waiting. He's missing valuable time. So as I went over the depth chart in segment number one, he's second on the depth chart right now. He's on the pup list. So, you know, we we don't expect him to to be out there getting any burn anyway. But, man, he needs to have an opportunity to get some reps. He really does. Because, again, if he's going to be that guy uh, and be the starter, he's going to he needs to get acclimated with the rest of the offensive line. And look, I'm not worried about Colton Miller, but they should all be working together. Right. The Raiders team needs the starting five to be out there and working together and all get on the same page. And right now they're not doing that. So uh, at least the Raiders have Andrews, Pete and, and, Col- and Cody Whitehair right now, two veterans that have been around for a long time. But I look at those guys, it's like masking tape. Masking tape is good for the short term, but it's not good for the long term. So I don't know how long that they have to be the masking tape for the Raiders offensive line, but I would like to see JPJ get back uh, and Colton Miller get back sooner rather than later. Now, I think they are Munford and, DJ Glaze have done a decent job, decent to good job, 
Uh, Mumford's had moments where he's been really good. He's had moments where he's not been looking so good. TJ Glaze has had moments where he looked really good, and he's had moments where he hasn't looked really good, right? Andre James is doing what he does. Dylan Parham, I think, has had a really good camp. So, uh, you know, they, they just got to keep working along that offensive line. But I'm with you. I'm definitely concerned about JPJ not being out there, and I'm getting concerned about Colton Miller because he needs to get a little time just to get some reps and get some continuity and get on the same page. But Raider Yo, again, thanks for the text. I appreciate you. And that's all I got time for for today's show. Dave and Phoenix, I got your call coming up tomorrow. Uh, Ricardo and El Paso hit us with a text. I got that coming up tomorrow. Uh, we're also going to talk today, this morning, to safeties coach Gerald Alexander, running game coordinator and linebackers coach Mike Caldwell, defensive line coach Robbie Leonard, and corners back coach Ricky Manning Jr. So looking forward to talking to all four of those guys. Really going to focus on Rob Leonard and Ricky Manning Jr. for sure. Those will be the two guys that I make sure that I talk to, just like I had an opportunity to talk to Cadillac uh, Williams on Saturday and also talk to uh, uh, James Craig, the offensive line coach. I prioritize those guys, got those. I'm going to prioritize Rob Leonard and Ricky Manning Jr. for sure uh, coming up later on this morning. And we'll see what we get from it and bring back to the table as well. We'll obviously have more news and notes and Training camp is almost over, and then you'll get to uh, see some preseason action coming up as early as Saturday. So uh, until tomorrow, Ray Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.